Wanneer jy die sien hoor, is dit 5 uur precies. Vijf uur precies. <laughs> Hello, every bad day. Uur precies. Yes. Um, um, my name is Sydney. Sydney Winston. And hello to all of you. So, this is not going to be very long, I shouldn't think. Um, essentially, it is... Um, I don't know if I've done a video on this before about the clergy project, which is uh, a way for uh, clergy who are... Um, who are really atheists but you know have a job it's a way for them to transition and to uh, interact bounce ideas or share experiences with others in the same position of which there are many many people and I'm going to um, keep this short there's, there's a few um, short videos to watch probably won't take 15 minutes altogether this whole uh, this whole segment but essentially the first one is Dan Barker uh, ex fundamentalist evangelist Dan Barker who is uh, kind of big in charge of the clergy project I, I think or founded it He's going to talk about it uh, in a in a f under five minute speech, and then there's a few um, a few clergy that under two minutes are going to just uh, introduce themselves and tell the story, and pretty much uh, let anyone else out there who is caught up in church hierarchy, in church politics, in in, in a in a situation which seems uh, inex inextricable, which you can't get yourself out of, and you want to move on, and uh, and you've realized the truth, that <laughs> religion is nonsense, God is impossible. So anyway, um, I want to uh, introduce Mr. Dan, and uh, let him say and he's at the uh what is it the uh the clergy project skepticon 2nd of november sorry 4th of november 2011. there are preachers priests monks nuns that have lost their faith they are now atheists who want to get out of the ministry and uh over the years, I've collected stories of former clergy. I have about 25 or 30 friends who used to be preachers who are now out. And um, a few years ago, um, one of them from Norway, Levi Fragel, said, why don't we start a group of some sort of former preachers or preachers? Well, then uh, Daniel Dennett and his colleague Linda Lascola last year, you may have seen the study they came up with about atheists in the pulpit. Well, some of the men that they found for their study were people that I had found because they'd read Godless, and they write an email or a letter saying, by the way, I'm still in the pulpit, but I don't believe anymore, and I need to get out. What do I do? So I was able to give uh, Dan and Linda six or eight names, and they, they took about three of them and actually went and interviewed these ministers who are still preaching right now, who have to get up on Sunday morning. They don't believe it anymore. Uh, but they hate what they're saying, and uh, they came out in that first part of the study, and then in uh, this year, they're now working on part two of Ministers, Atheists in the Pulpit. And uh, Richard Dawkins, for a number of years, has talked about, um, after we had our conference in Iceland, he said, we need to do something to help these clergy, atheists that are in the pulpit, but they don't know how to get out or what to do. So... Uh, Dawkins and, and Robin or Elizabeth Cornwell and uh, Linda Lascola and Daniel Dennett and I and a number of others, we started a brand new group that none of you can join. Uh, isn't that nice? Uh, there's so many groups to join, but, uh, but you can join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, by the way. Uh, and we started a group. It started in March of this year called The Clergy Project. And we started with about 52 names. Uh, most of them were former like me, but a few of them are still in the ministry. 
Today, just this morning, we signed up a, a practicing Buddhist monk uh, who's an atheist. We now have 113 people in the group, and with 31 of them are active clergy. Uh, there's a guy in Tennessee, his nickname. 31 active clergy, and this is 2011, so we're talking seven, eight years ago. They all use pseudonyms in the group, and no more than two of us actually know the real identity of these people, because their privacy is important. Um, I was telling this story at a debate about a month ago in Indiana, uh, that they're having trouble trying to find an exit strategy, and the rabbi during the debate got up and said, it's an easy exit strategy. Get up on Sunday morning and say, I'm an atheist now, and you're all deluded. There's an exit strategy. <laughs> uh, but, but it's really sad. These guys, uh, and, and there's some women too, um, they want to get out, and they, it's a timing thing. It's an issue of, uh, you know, income, uh, health care, children to support. There you go. Who's yeah. going to hire somebody with a divinity degree in this economy, you know? What are you going to do? How do you change? So those of us who did make it out, uh, we, we call ourselves alums or former, we are there in this secret invitation-only community called uh, the Clergy Project. And Richard Dawkins put up a lot of money to actually make the web page, and it's a pretty neat place. But it's very carefully screened and vetted, so who we, we allow to get in. In fact, some people we can't allow in because they're just, for some reason or other, don't qualify. But then some of them are agonizing, and some of them I haven't told my wife yet, and what are, what are my kids? And, and yesterday my daughter was asking me these questions about God and religion, and I couldn't be honest with my own daughter. I wanted to tell her, you know, what I know about the Bible, but I, but I couldn't. Uh, since March, three of them have graduated. Three of them are now out of the ministry, including Jerry DeWitt, who uh, is helping with rational recovery. Uh, he's a fireball. He left the ministry this summer, uh, Pentecostal in Louisiana, and his income has cut in half, but he couldn't be happier. He says, what's the price of integrity, you know? Uh, others can't do that. Some of them, and we are not judgmental. Some of you might think, well, isn't hypocrisy wrong? Isn't it wrong to be lying? You know, yes, but sometimes it's like, well, suppose you're going through a, a breakup. When's the moment? You know, suppose you realize you're, you're going to break up or divorce or whatever. Where's that point? You know, so sometimes that point is a tough thing. Uh, another one, uh, Chris was his nickname in, in North Carolina. He just left about a month ago. And he's working for a nonprofit now, so he found some work. That's the big problem with them is what to do, what work to do. Yeah. Okay, so, oops, wasn't ready for that. I was kind of really engaged in what he was talking about. But, um, so that's essentially the, the, the clergy project that he's introduced. Now I'm going to introduce to you, show you, some one how many I've got you one two three four five six seven I know the first one's Canadian and the first one is kind of the Canadian um, clergy <laughs> she's she's actually I watched a little bit of it she's actually uh, working as a preacher or a pastor or minister in a church as an atheist so I want to listen to how that works out for her. That should be interesting, yeah. Uh, alrighty, let's let her roll. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to slide her in, and then she can just start talking. How's that? There you go. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Greta Vosper, and I'm a minister in the United Church of Canada who's actually out as an atheist. My congregation and I, over the past 15 years, have transitioned beyond the beliefs that divide, beyond doctrinal understandings of Christianity, and have distilled out of that history all those things that we think are worthy of taking forward. So uh, love and forgiveness and trust and justice and all of those values by which we um, identify ourselves as human and without which we probably wouldn't identify ourselves as human. I've been involved with the Clergy Project for two years now as a member of its board of directors uh, in the capacity as 
secretary and have enjoyed the rich and vibrant conversation that takes place on the private members forum as well as the wisdom and the clarity of thought that goes into developing an organization that uh, touches people in so many different religious traditions and so many different denominations. Uh, the work is ongoing. It will always be ongoing until we reach a point in time where humans can trust one another uh, beyond those divides that uh, we have traced between us and find our way forward to a sustainable future uh, in which religion, if not eradicated, at least no longer separates us. Nice. Okay, that was Greta, Greta Vosper. I'll, I'll put these links in the below uh, when we're done here. I hadn't put them in initially, I don't think, but I will. Ne okay, that was Greta Vosper. Next guy is going to be John Campier. John, John Campier. Hi. My name is John Compeer, and I was born a Southern Baptist minister. Well, not actually, but my father was a minister and his father before him. Actually, when I was ordained at age 18, I was the fifth generation Southern Baptist minister in my family. I never thought of doing anything else, and actually, if I had thought of doing something else, I'm sure I would have been discouraged from trying that. I stayed in ministry until I was age 32, at which time all the doubts about why this didn't quite make sense to me had overwhelmed me. I knew that if I continued in ministry, I would become publicly cynical, I mean publicly phony, and privately cynical. When I resigned my church, I didn't tell them that I no longer believed, although I had said some outrageous things from the pulpit, like, I don't believe in an eternal hell, and if there is one, I want to go there because I wouldn't want to spend eternity with a powerful being who would make such a horrible thing as hell. But I didn't tell them that I no longer believed. I simply said I'm doing a lot of counseling and I'm not very good at it, and I need to become a better change agent. So I went back to school for five more years and got my PhD in clinical psychology so I could continue to be a helper without having the theological background. So when the clergy project was started four years ago, I was one of the original 52 charter members. My position on the board leads me to be able to interview applicants who want to be a part of our project. And it helps me a lot to know that I'm helping them through a difficult time through which I went without any help from anybody else. The clergy project is a powerful, wonderful experience. All right, that was, that was t uh, John, John Compier. Uh, next up, we have a gentleman by the name of Terry Plank. That's Terry Plank. Hello, my name is Terry Plank. I was a pastor of a house church in Half Moon Bay. Used to minister on the boardwalk of Venice, California as a long-haired Birkenstock preacher of love and care serving religious leaders need. I came in primarily to help them and to support and to encourage. And in the process, eventually became the president of the board of directors and my job has been to help facilitate our mission. And so the joy for me is being able to take the expertise I developed over years as a minister, as a psychotherapist, and as a search marketing professional, to use that to help us to fulfill that mission and it's a great joy. It's a group of people who love and care and support each other in such a marvelous way and have, most of us have never even met each other. But I'm most appreciative of not only the leaders that I'm able to work with to help this mission forward, but also the great people that we support daily on our online presence with the forum, encouraging, strengthening, being there for them as they struggle with the various issues of coming out and living a life with authenticity and respect. And if not able to do that, how to find that special, unique way to be in those ministries until they're able to move out in a respectful way that promotes human caring 
without being tied up with the dogma. Okay, that was Terry Plank. Okay. My name is Michael Thomas Tower. That's Michael Thomas, but he started before I told him to. So, Michael Thomas, I'm not too sure whether to send you to the back of the line, Michael. Or, because of your obviously advanced age, I just might forgive you. Yeah, yes, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas Tower. My name is Michael Thomas Tower. I've been a part of the clergy project for three years. I came into it having quite a while ago escaped from being a Southern Baptist minister. What I have found in the clergy project are people who are supportive of what I am, with me with what I was, and helping me to get over the damage that I did as a minister in a Southern Baptist church. The clergy project is here to help others who are trying to make the escape that is so difficult for so many. We can do a lot, we can't do everything, but we can be a part of what can very, be a very meaningful way to come into life the way people want to live it and should be able to live it, free from superstition and magic, just living with what's real and what's reasonable. Yeah, Thomas, Michael, Thomas, Tower, take it away, baby. Okay, now, next. We're just moving this right along, aren't we? Okay, who we have next? Step up to the, uh, step up to the plate, Teresa McBain. She's somebody who uh, I know something about. I know she was a, um, a, some kind of a minister something involved in the church, became an atheist or realized atheism, actually worked in the, in, in the uh, atheist, uh, in atheist activism, I think for American atheists or freedom of something or other, maybe she'll explain, but uh, this is Teresa McBain. Hi, my name is Teresa McBain. I'm a former Methodist minister who came out publicly as a non-believer in 2012 at the American Atheist Convention. Currently, I'm working with Recovering from Religion as the director of the Hotline Project. I became involved with the clergy project in late 2011 while still an active minister. Through a strange set of circumstances, I discovered Dan Barker's book, Godless read it very, very quickly because it related so closely to my current situation and found a way to make a contact with him. When he shared about the mission of the clergy project, even though it was very small at the time, I knew that I had found a place where I fit and a place where I could maintain my sanity while I worked through an exit strategy. Throughout the next several months, the clergy project was truly a safe haven for me. It was a place where I connected with other people who were going through similar circumstances or people who had been in my position and had made it through to the other side intact. Uh, I'm currently involved with the clergy project as the press and media coordinator with the communications committee. Honestly, I think that without the clergy project, I, I don't think I would have had the strength and support and encouragement that was necessary for me to navigate those months while still an active clergy member, but in the three years since I have been out publicly as an atheist, the clergy project has remained a strong tie, uh, a strong hope, anchor, whatever you want to call it, for me as I navigate the waters as a newly found non-believer. The men and women that I've encountered, many of them have become close personal friends with whom I, I couldn't even continue. I can't even describe how much it means for me to be involved with them and with the clergy project. Teresa McBain, ladies and gentlemen. Teresa McBain. Oh, excuse me. Right, so um, next up we have Neil Carter. Now, Neil Carter has a minute and some seconds to tell his story. <laughs> Hi, my name is Neil Carter, and uh, I grew up Southern Baptist, 
and I went to seminary at a reformed seminary, after which time I got involved in the house church movement and became a Christian author and also worked on helping plant churches for a few years. After that time, I ended up leaving the faith altogether and since then have taken up writing about my experience as a non-religious person living in the Deep South, and I blog under the name Godless and Dixie for Pathios. And since that time, I've also gotten connected to the Clergy Project because as someone with a background in ministry myself, I see the unique challenges of working your way out of a reputation of being a man of God to being a man who doesn't even believe in God. And so it's really important to me to see friends of mine who are in similar positions figure out how to transition out of those former lives into their new lives and, and how to take ownership of who they are in a new role. So what I would love to see is I'd love to see the Clergy Project continue to grow and reach out to my friends who themselves have questions but don't feel free to ask their questions to their logical conclusion. That was Neil. Neil Carter. Okay, uh, we have one more for the night before we, we, we finish up this segment. And uh, next up to the mic is Chris. Chris Highland, who will uh, round off the, um, the group of speakers that uh, have been so uh, generous with their time. Well, my name is Chris Highland. Uh, I'm a former Protestant minister. I was a Presbyterian minister for 14 years, served a couple of churches. Uh, my primary uh, role over the years was uh, interfaith chaplain. Uh, so I was in a county jail uh, as well as um, street chaplain for a number of years. Um, I left my ordination in 2001 and continued on with chaplaincy for a while. And I'm, now I'm teaching at College of Marin, uh, doing some writing. I have a series of books that I've written. This was my first, John Muir. Uh, and um, The Life After Faith is another book of mine. My address is a river. So I try to tell stories about my uh, experience leaving the church. Uh, and the clergy project has been an important part of that, uh, joining with others who have uh, emerged and I've uh, moved on to uh, try to find other paths of service uh, and understanding the, the, uh, how beautiful this world is and that we need to learn to get along. So uh, I want to continue to be a leader uh, and to work with others who uh, really have skills to um, practice everything I learn as a chaplain, which begins with listening and caring um, and being better human beings. Hmm. Well, there you go. That's them. Um, good. We are able to keep it short. It's uh, under 30 minutes, under 25 minutes. Um, so just, uh, just to recap, if you are um, a doubter, if you know for, for a fact that uh, there is no God, like, like more and more people are coming to, to know, understand, realize, that uh, they've been duped all this time into into pretty much being forced to believe that there is a uh, superior, um, extra, uh, supernatural, whatever, nonsense. So, there is a way out. Uh, don't be afraid. Speak out. You have, you have ears to listen to you. And I would uh, implore that please use them. Um, regarding this video itself, please share it with everybody you know and uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Uh, if you like the video, that'll that'll help me as well. And um, you promote this channel, promote atheism in general, and uh, we will see you next time.